Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm sure a lot of you guys saw this headline and I wanted to make a video about it because some of you guys have brought up this exact concern in my comments before. A few of you had been nervous about something like this happening and it looks like it did. So while NASA is doing their confirmation tests, let's get into the who, what, when, where, why, because this story is kind of crazy. So on March 8th, 2024, Alejandro Otero, a resident of Naples, Florida, was traveling overseas when he received a panicked phone call from his son. Otero's son asked if he was sitting down, which is just a terrible way to start any phone call. But his son went on to explain that something had crashed into their house and torn a hole through the roof and the second story floor. After making sure everybody was okay, Otero cut his trip short and went home and found these holes. He searched around for the cause and found an unusual projectile, a dense cylindrical piece of charred metal about the size of a soup can lodged in a wall. And so he checks his nest camera in the backyard and you can actually hear the projectile crashing into his house. And to Otero, it didn't look like a normal piece of debris. He insisted, I knew it was from outer space. So he does some searching online and finds out that a pallet of old batteries that had been jettisoned from the International Space Station in 2021 was due to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere on March 8th, the day his house was struck. So he tries contacting NASA directly, but doesn't have any luck. So he responds to a tweet from an astrophysicist named Jonathan McDowell and includes photos of the damage and the projectile. And McDowell actually helps get him in contact with the authorities and NASA. Because the question was, was his house hit by some International Space Station garbage? Because that's not supposed to happen. The batteries that were jettisoned from the ISS were attached to a cargo pallet that was originally supposed to come back to Earth in a controlled manner. But a series of delays meant that the cargo pallet missed its ride back to Earth. So NASA jettisoned the batteries in 2021 to head back to Earth in an unguided re-entry. Without any propulsion on their own, the batteries were adrift in Earth's orbit for three years until aerodynamic drag finally pulled the pallet back into Earth's atmosphere on March 8th. At the time of the March 8th re-entry, a NASA spokesperson at the Johnson Space Center in Houston said NASA conducted a thorough debris analysis assessment on the pallet and has determined it will harmlessly re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. But this was by far the most massive object that NASA had ever tossed overboard from the International Space Station. But NASA said, we do not expect any portion to have survived re-entry. However, research from other space experts did not match NASA's statement. The Aerospace Corporation, a federally funded research and development center, says, quote, a general rule of thumb is that 20 to 40 percent of the mass of a large object will reach the ground. The exact percentage depends on the design of the object, but these nickel hydrogen batteries were made of metals with relatively high densities. And size-wise, the pallet was about twice as tall as a standard kitchen refrigerator. Ahead of the re-entry, the European Space Agency also acknowledged some fragments from the battery pallet may survive to the ground. Otero said that NASA representatives visited his house on March 28th to retrieve the object. NASA spokesperson Josh Finch said that the agency is analyzing the object at the Kennedy Space Center. If NASA confirms that the projectile that fell through Otero's house last month did come from the ISS, it would join a small handful of incidents that have occurred when an object that has fallen out of orbit has damaged someone's property. Earth is a very big place, and so it is fairly common for people to find a piece of space junk in a field or washed up on a beach.
speech, but it is rare for a re-entry to hit a structure or injure a person. To the best of our knowledge, falling space debris has never actually killed anyone. And despite this incident, the odds of that happening are pretty astronomical. According to ESA, the annual risk of an individual human being being injured by space debris is less than one in 100 billion. Billion with a B. So if the debris did come from the ISS, Otero just may be the victim of some astronomically bad luck. It is actually quite common for NASA to toss its trash into space, where it usually vaporizes upon re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, according to Jonathan McDowell, the guy that Otero reached out to, who actually works at the Harvard-Smithsonian Institute for Astrophysics. But it seems like the real issue with this particular re-entry was really the size. It was the heaviest object ever jettisoned from the ISS when it was flung into space three years ago. McDowell said that he thinks there's a really good chance that the projectile that struck Otero's home did come from the ISS, based on tracking its descent. Debris was probably scattered over a few hundred miles, from mid-gulf to Florida, McDowell said. I think it's very likely that Otero's object is indeed from the pallet. So as of this recording, we are still waiting on confirmation from NASA to see what all of this will mean. But Otero said that he would like to keep the projectile. He said he's asked to keep it about a hundred times. And he also said that while NASA representatives were, quote, shocked and apologetic, they also said that they first needed to confirm that the debris was NASA's property. But they did not confirm whether or not they will return the object to Otero. Which I sort of feel is like the least you can do for the guy. <laughs> and also maybe fix the holes in his house, which Otero said he actually has contacted his insurance company about repairing the holes in his roof. He said, I went on the website to fill out a claim and had to click what kind of damage it was, but there was no option that matched, so I just clicked other. Which makes sense, because I think came from space is not really an option that insurance has like considered before. So we'll see. I mean, a lot of you called it. Some of you guys aren't fans of those controlled entries. Never mind the uncontrolled ones. It also makes me wonder if they've jettisoned anything heavier or bigger than this pallet in the last three years. Because I kind of hope not. Also, when he described it as like the size of a can of soup, that kind of freaked me out. Because you can imagine if you like threw a can of soup at Because you can imagine that if you threw a can of soup or a can of organic garbanzo beans at somebody, bam, this would really hurt. Never mind if this came hurtling like from space through your roof, through your second story floor and lodged into a wall. That's, that's super crazy, NASA. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Shocking, sadly predictable. Let me know what you think. I'm also just really impressed that Otero really pursued NASA about this. I feel like some other less curious people would have just looked at it and been like, huh, that's weird, trash, <laughs> and just not thought about it anymore. So good for him. So yeah, whole story, complete madness. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Be safe out there. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.